On the dashboard tab, you may input your core inputs, core drivers for the model, see the core financials and core outputs on the charts. So let's set up this model and we will start from units of measurement. We have two options here to set up accurate units of measurement and mass units of measurement. Please note that each yellow cell has its own explanation of what you are supposed to input. It's just easier to navigate across the model and to understand what you are supposed to input here. So let's set up the acreage, for example, in square feet and the mass in pounds. So the next step is to set up your total land acreage by years, for example, 5000 first year and additional 1000 acres each next year. The next step is to allocate this total acreage by owned acreage and lease it or rented acreage. For example, 30%, 35, 40, 45 and 50 for the owned. And the rest obviously will be leased. In the next section you may see the absolute values of acreage in square feet based on this allocation and total land acreage. And the next step is to set up your purchase cost per square foot and the rent cost per square foot per month. So for example, 10,000 and additional thousand dollars will be the purchase cost per square foot and the rent cost can be 300, 350, 400, 450 and 500. The calculation of rent you may see on the variable expenses, land rent cost. On the asset step you may see the total of net land amount and the capital expenditure by months in section number two. And once you set up everything, all the expenses, wages and revenue assumptions, you may review your core financials, the revenue breakdown, profitability, cash flow and the cumulative cash flow charts. On the income statement tab, you may see your main components of your profit and loss, which is total revenue, total cost of goods sold, gross margin, total variable expenses, total admin salaries and wages, total fixed expenses, EBDA, depreciation and amortization, EBIT, interest expense, net profit before tax, your corporate tax, and as a result, net profit after tax. Please note that each category has its own subcategories, so you may click on this plus button and see the detailization, for example, for fixed expenses, or for variable expenses, or for example, for the revenue. On the cash flow statement, you may see your cash flow broken down by cash flow from operating activities, cash flow from investing activities, and cash flow from financing activities. The same information you may see on the cash flow statement in a direct method, operating, investing and financing activities, but in more collapsed form, just easier to see the information here. And the balance sheet will show you the breakdown of your current assets, non-current assets, current liabilities, non-current liabilities and equity by its subcategories. The summary of three statements you may find on the financial statement summary tab. On the top you have income statement broken down by five years and the selected year which you can change here broken down by months. Below you may see the same information on the chart form. The next set of tables and charts will show you the balance sheet, main KPIs broken down by five years and selected year by months. And the last part will show you the cash flow statement breakdown for the five years and for 12 months for the selected year as well as charts with the same information. On the financial chart step, you may see your main financial KPIs on the two sets of charts, which is the breakdown of two years by months and the breakdown of five years by months. So on the top, you may see the EBIT amount. The next set of charts will show you the revenue breakdown by products. The next operating cash flow broken down by cash inflow and cash outflow. The next set of charts will show you the cash balance by months for the two years and for the five years. And on the last set of charts you will see the EBDA as a yellow line and the breakdown of this EBDA which includes the revenue, COX and OPEX.
On the operational charts you may see two sets of charts with the main operational KPIs. On the left side you may see two years broken down by months. And on the right side you may see the five years broken down by months. On the top set of charts you may see the UNILs bought. The next set of charts will show you the production in pounds excluding the mortality rate. Also by months for two years and for the five years. And the last set of charts will show you the sales volume in pounds broken down by products for two years and for the five years broken down by months. On the benchmark KPI step, you may compare up to five benchmark KPIs with your industry standards. For example, gross margin, the industry standard is 60% for your country or your business. And you may see on this chart, gross margin industry KPI is changed, which is orange here. You have also net profit, wages as a percentage of revenue, harvest productivity, pounds per square foot per year, and the acreage square foot per direct FTE. All these yellow cells which are industry KPIs are changeable. Net profit can be 20% for example for your industry, for your country. And to the right of these yellow cells you may see the values calculated by the model, driven by assumptions you inputted before on the revenue, expenses and wages tabs. The same information you may see on the charts, which is gross margin, net profit, wages as a percentage of revenue, harvest productivity and acreage square foot per direct FTE. On each chart you may see the orange, this is industry specific benchmark and as a blue value, this is a value calculated by the model. On the top revenue tab, you may see the breakdown of your revenue by products and also by years with absolute values and percentage breakdown. The same information you may see on the charts below. Here you may see the percentage breakdown and absolute values breakdown. Below you may see the revenue depth and monthly run rate chart. You can select the year and based on this year you will see the information of revenue by products as absolute values and percentage revenue breakdown on the pie chart. On the revenue bridge you may find the main revenue drivers of growth. You may select the first year and you may select the last year and between these years you will see the waterfall chart and you may see which are the main drivers of your revenue growth, which specific products grow faster and which specific products grow slower. On the top expenses tab, you may find the breakdown of top four expenses categories and all other expenses collapsed into other category. You may see the breakdown of absolute values broken down by years with a total below and also to the right you may see the percentage breakdown of these expenses. The same information you may see on the charts below, which you may find the percentage breakdown and the absolute values breakdown. On the couple of charts below you may find expenses depth and monthly run rate for selected year. You are able to change this year and you may see the absolute values and percentage breakdown on the pie chart. On the expenses bridge you may find the main drivers of expenses growth between these two years. These years are, are also changeable. So you may select the first year and you may select the last year. And you may see that total expenses starting in 2020 will change to total expenses in 2024 by this waterfall. On the break-even tab you may find the calculation of revenue break-even level and break-even chart. For this particular, particular use case, you may find that your revenue break-even level is less than actual revenue calculation. This means that company is profitable. On the valuation tab, you may see the calculation of company valuation based on the cost of equity, 
which you may input here. Cost of loans you previously inputted in, on the dashboard. Calculation of resource share you may see here. There is also tax rate. And here you may find the weighted average cost of capital. In the valuation model there is two valuation methods, which is EBGA multiple and revenue multiple. You may select one of them and below you may input multiple of methods. Based on this information we can see terminal value, which is calculated on unlevered free cash flow. You may see the present value of unlevered free cash flow, NPV and multiplicator evaluation for this particular company. The color coding in the model is very simple. You may change any yellow cell in any yellow sheet within the model. This means that this yellow cell has some input, assumption or driver which impacts the calculation within the model. Blue sheets means that on these sheets there are some charts, reports and other information which can be useful for reporting purposes. On the tabs without color we have some extra calculations related to revenue, to debts, equity, inventory and everything which is needed for the report, reporting. Additionally, you have contents tab, which allow you to navigate across the model very simple. So you may click on any report and you can go back. It is broken down by reports, assumptions, statements and setup. There is short explanation about what each tab does. But if you want to know more, you can go to how to and to see more detailed, ex detailed explanation of what each tab does and what inputs you may find on this sheet and what kind of outputs you may find on, the, on this sheet as well. Any header of this section is also clickable. So you may click on, for example, book assets and you go directly to this tab. On the revenue tab, you may see the main revenue drivers. So let me show you how it works. First of all, you have up to five different product categories. You may change the names like AAA, BBB or any name of production you would like to use. You have up to five categories. If you don't need, for example, two of them, you can just clean these values and you will have only three products in your model. The next stage is to set up quantity of juveniles bought by years, for example, 500,000 for the 2020 for product A and additional 100,000 per each next year. This is changeable for all other products as well by years. The next step is to set up the conversion of juveniles to pounds of the production, for example, meat or fish. And this is obviously after growth period. So, for example, one juvenile can give you two pounds of product A, meat or fish. Then you should input the growth period, means that starting from juvenile to the final production, there will be six months, for example. This is also changeable to three or eight, any amount of months you need to grow your juveniles. Obviously, you'll have the mortality rate. For example, for product A, it can be 5%, 4, 4 and half, 3 and 2. The same idea for another four products. The next step is to set up the sales price per pound of the final production. It can be $10, for example, plus $2 each next year. And the final step is to set up the sales period in months after production. If your juveniles go to a final production in January, for, exa for example, you can put your meat in freezer and sell it within two months or sell it within six months. It will impact on your inventory or if you need to sell it exactly in the same months as it is producted, you can just put one month and there will be no impact on the inventory in this case. On the cost of goods sold tab, you may see six categories which are already predefined. 
on the top you may see direct salaries and wages which are driven by assumptions from the direct wages tab you may see the calculations in here by months on the this line and you have five categories for cost of goods sold for even aisles as dollars per 1000 and on the top you may see the amount of total revenue total acreage and total production below you may see the calculation of cost of goods sold line items by months and by categories and the breakdown of cox by line items and months you may see in income statement under cox section here we see the same categories and breakdown by months On the direct wages tab, you may input your direct wages assumptions. You have up to 19 categories broken down by three sections. Let me show you how it works. So first, five direct accounts. You can adjust as a parameter, means that one FT per basis, and the basis in this case is per square foot. And this can be one FT per 200 square foot, or it can be one FT per 150 square foot for the type number two. And depending on the acreage, you will have the calculation of direct employees here. Also, you can set up the annual salary per one FTE, which can be, for example, $20,000. You can input annual salary rise, 5%, for example, per year. Below, you may see the calculation of annual salary depending on base salary and for depending on annual salary rise. We have also also monthly bonus, which can be 10%, for example, and the tax rate, which is payroll tax, for example, 20% or 12% in this case. Below you may see the calculation of staff numbers, or headcount numbers, salaries, monthly bonus, and monthly base taxes. The next category or type is to drive your direct headcount as a parameter per pounds of production means that per 10,000 of pounds production you'll have one FTE. Again you can set up salary, salary rise, monthly bonus, payroll tax rate and you will see the amount of headcount which is needed depending on the production driven by the revenue assumptions. And the final tab in this case is to set up your direct account as just hire date for example February 20 fire date can be the last date of the model and the basis is manual entry you can set up the salary as well ten thousand dollars and you can adjust numbers of uh, direct employees manually two four six eight and ten in income statement under Cox section you may see the direct salaries and wages calculation so it's a part of your cost of goods sold. On the fixed expenses tab, you may input up to 15 line items for your fixed expenses. Let me show you how it works. For example, you have utilities. You will start pay starting from March 20 till the end of the model, which is December 24. Let me see it here. Let's pretend periodicity will be daily with the amount of $50 per day. So you may see this amount in here. It is calculated based on count of days within this month. So obviously in March 20 you have 31 days. That's why you will have 1550. In April you have 30 days. This means this will be $1500. Also, you have ability to input some growth rate year over year. Once you input this growth rate, you will see that your utilities will grow over year over year. Let me give you a couple of other expenses types. For example, advertising. Let it start in March and finish in August 24. This will be on weekly basis with amount of $100 without any growth. So start, starting from March till August 24, you have $400 per month, which is four weekly payments each month. 
and that's it. Another option is B-Weekly, for example, $500. You can start from July, for example, and you'll have two payments, which is two B-Weekly payments within the months. $500 multiplied by two, you have $1,000 per month. Again, you can input some growth rate and you will see that your advertising expenses will grow year over year till the August 24, which is the last date of this expense type. Another option, office setup, which can be one-time payment, which will happen in February 20, with amount of $5,000. Obviously, you should not input any growth rates because this is just one-time fee. And you may see that office setup will happen in February 20 with this amount. Another option, insurance. Let it be start from January 20 till the end of the model. And it can happen monthly with $1,000 per month with 5% of growth first year, 3% of growth second year, 2% of growth third and 1% year number four. So you may see this calculation here, starting from January 21, it will grow for 5%, which is $50. And starting from January 22, it will grow for 3%, which is additionally $32. Another option, quarterly. You may see that insurance will be paid $1,000 each quarter. You can start it, for example, from February, and this will be shifted to one month forward. Another option, semi-annually. In this case, you will have insurance payments once per half a year, again, with a percentage of growth. And the last option is annual payments or yearly payments. You'll pay one time per 12 months starting from February till December 24. For each expense type, you can use growth rate and the calculation you may see in here. Also, in income statement, you may find total fixed expenses. Group, if you will ungroup this section, you can see these amounts broken down by months and by fixed expenses line items. the variable expenses tab, you may see the six categories of variable expenses. The first one is land red cost, which is already predefined by assumptions which you input on the dashboard. And the calculation of land rent cost you may see in here. The next five categories are changeable, so you may print something here, for example, variable expenses. Other category or something like that. And you have different options of how to calculate that. For example, feed can be calculated as dollars per 1000 juveniles per month, which is $300. Water and power can be calculated as dollar per square foot per month. And you have two options to calculate variable expense as a percentage of total revenue. For example, other can be calculated as a 2% of your revenue. On the top you have the main drivers, which is total revenue, total acreage, and total production in pounds. And at the bottom you may see the calculation of these categories by months. And in income statement tab, under variable expenses section, you may see the breakdown of these categories by months. On the admin wages tab, you can set up up to 19 categories for your admin staff. Let me show you how it works. For example, managers with higher date starting, for example, from February 20 till the end of the model. You can adjust annual salary per one headcount. It can be, for example, $40,000. Then you should input number of admin employees. Let's pretend in the 2020 it will be one, then two, three, four, and five. Also, you can input annual salary rise. So, for example, 3% of annual salary first year, 4 next, 5 and 6. Also, here you have set up for the monthly bonus, 
for example, 5% per month and the payroll tax rate, for example, 12. Below you may see the calculation of annual salary, depends on the annual salary for the base year and for the annual salary rise. Also here you can see the calculation of number of headcounts, it starts in February because we set up February start of hire. Here you can have a monthly base salaries, monthly bonus calculation and monthly base taxes, which is payroll taxes. And under income statement you have total admin salaries and wages section where you may see the breakdown of all your headcounts categories and the breakdown the values by months. On the capex step you may input up to 20 development expenses categories. Let me give you a couple of examples. So for example office development with purchase date of February 20, with spending of $10,000. And you also can input payment delay. What does it mean? Let me set up two months, for example. It means that this amount will be accrued in February, because of purchase date is February, but paid development expenses will be in April 20 for this office development and you will have some balance of capex accounts payable for two months. Let me give you another example, other development expenses. Let's say March 20, $5,000 with zero payment delay. This means that this amount is accrued in March and paid in March as well. The total amount of development expenses you may find in Assets tab. By default it has useful time for 5 years for the calculation of depreciation. You may find calculation of depreciation for development expenses in here. Here you may also find capital expenditure and closing net book value. Additionally you have up to 6 placeholders for other assets, for example other assets with useful time of 10 years with cost of $25,000 and this launch date in April. You may find it in here. You can see capital expenditure. You may see book depreciation by months for this amount. And you may see closing net book value. The total amount of depreciation you may find in income statement. On the cash flow you may find cash flow from investing activities for these assets. And on the balance sheet you may find fixed assets amount under non-current assets and capex prepayment and capex payables as well. Also on the top of the dashboard you have Debts assumptions. Let me show you how it works. So for the each debt, we are able to select the debt type. There are two debt types in the model, which is annuity and usual. Annuity means that each monthly payment, which consists your debt repayment plus interest expenses, will be equal each month. In case if you will select usual, your main debt repayments will be equal parts and interest will be just interest on the debts closing balance. Let me give you an example how it works. So you may input some amount of the debt, the launch date, term will be 60 months and interest can be 5%. You may also input the grant which is just simple amount which is paid in some specific months and that's it. No repayments, no terms in terms of interest. So all the calculations of the debt you may see on the capital tab. Calculations for the debt number one, debt number two, debt number three. Total debts with grants. These calculations impact income statement, interest expenses, the cash flow 
interest paid, debt drawdowns, debt repayments, and on the balance sheet, you have the debt closing balance. On the capitalization table, you can input different founders and investors' contributions, broken down by different dates of funding, with different cost of share for each series, and you can see the dilution of shares after each round, and pre-money total equity and post-money total equity. Let's pretend that we have two founders, founder 1, founder 2. So total amount of shares for founder 1 can be 10,000, for founder number 2, 20,000. Let's imagine that cost of share will be $2 and the date of founding is February. This means that investment for founder 1 is $20,000, for founder 2 is $40,000. In total they invest $60,000, which you may see here. The dilution is 34, 33 to 67 percentage of shares. So let's pretend that for series A we have one investor and the date of issuance is May. Cost per share is $5 per share and number of shares is 1000. So total amount of investment will be $5000. You may see that before the Series A total equity was $60,000, after $65,000 and Investor 1 will have 3.23 percentage of shares and the shares of Founder 1 and Founder 2 also diluted. 32, 